Savitri. Book 3. The Book of the Divine Mother. Canto 1. The Pursuit of the Unknowable. Pages 305 to 309. All is too little that world can give. Its power and knowledge are the gifts of time and cannot fill the spirit's sacred thirst. Although of one these forms of greatness are, and by its breath of grace our lives abide, although more near to us than nearness self, it is some muttered truth of what we are. Hidden by its own works, it seemed far off, impenetrable, occult, voiceless, obscure. The presence was lost by which all things have charm. The glory lacked of which they are dim signs. The world lived on made empty of its scars. Like love, when the beloved's face is gone, the lab to know seemed a vain strife of mind. All knowledge ended in the unknowable. The effort to rule seemed a vain pride of will, a trivial achievement scorned by time. All power retired into the omnipotent. A cave of darkness guards the eternal light. A silence settled on his striving heart. Absolved from the voices of the world's desire, he turned to the ineffable's timeless call. A being intimate and unnameable, a wide compelling ecstasy and peace, felt in himself and all and yet ungrasped, approached and faded from his soul's pursuit, as if forever luring him beyond. Near, it retreated, far, it called him still. Nothing could satisfy but its delight. Its absence left the greatest actions dull. Its presence made the smallest seem divine. When it was there, the heart's abyss was filled. But when the uplifting deity withdrew, existence lost its aim in the inane. The order of the immemorial planes, the godlike fullness of the instruments, were turned to props for an impermanent scene. But who that mightiness was, he knew not yet. Impalpable, yet filling all that is, it made and blotted out a million worlds, and took and lost a thousand shapes and names. It wore the guise of an indiscernible vast, or was a subtle kernel in the soul. A distant greatness left its huge and dim. A mystic closeness set it sweetly in. It seemed sometimes a figment or a robe, and seemed sometimes his own colossal shape. A jane doubt overshadowed his advance. Across a neutral, all-supporting void, whose blankness nursed his lone, immortal spirit, allude towards some recondite supreme, aided, coursed by enigmatic powers, aspiring and half-sinking and upborne, invincibly he ascended without pass, always a signless vague immensity, brooded without approach, beyond response, condemning finite things to nothingness fronting him with the incommensurable. Then to the ascent there came a mighty term. A height was reached where nothing may could live. A line where every hope and search must cease. Neared some intolerant bare reality. A zero formed pregnant with boundless change. On a dizzy verge where all disguises fail and the human mind must subjugate in light or die like a mark in the naked blaze of truth, he stood compelled to a tremendous choice. All he had been and all towards which he grew must now be left behind or else transformed into a self of that which has no name, alone and fronting an intangible force which offered nothing to the grasp of thought. His spirit faced the adventure of the inane, abandoned by the walls of form he strove, a fruitful worldwide ignorance foundered here. Thoughts, long, far-circling journey touched its close, and ineffective passed the actor will. The simple modes of being helped no more. 
the structures Nessine's bills collapsing failed, and even the spirit that holds the universe fainted in luminous insufficiency in an abysmal lapse of all things built, transcending every perishable support and joining at last his mighty origin, the separate self must melt or be reborn into a truth beyond the mind's appeal. All glory of outline, sweetness of harmony, rejected like a grace of trivial notes, explained from being silence, new, austere, died into a fine and blissful nothingness. The demiurges lost their names and forms. The great schemed worlds that they had planned and brought, passed, taken and abolished one by one. The universe removed its colored veil and at the unimaginable end of the huge riddle of created things appeared the far-seen godhead of the world. His feet firm burst on life's stupendous wings, omnipotent, a lonely seer of time, inward, inscrutable, with diamond gaze. Attracted by the unfathomable regard, the unsolved slow cycles of the earth found return to race again from that invisible sea. All from his puissance born was now undone. Nothing remained the cosmic mind conceives. Eternity prepared to fade and seem, a hue and the imposition on the void. Space was the fluttering of a dream that sang. Before its ending into nothing's deeps, the spirit that dies not and the Godhead self seemed myths projected from the unknowable. From it all sprang, in it is called to cease. But what that was, no thought nor sight could tell. Only a formless form of self was left. A tenuous ghost of something that had been the last experience of a lapsing day before it sinks into a boundless sea as if it kept even on the brink of naught. Its bare feeling of the ocean whence it came. A vastness brooded free from sense of space. An everlastingness cut off from time. A strange, sublime, inalterable peace. Silent, rejected from its world and soul, a stark, companionless reality answered at last to his soul's passionate search. Patientless, wordless, absorbed in its fathomless hush, keeping the mystery none would ever pierce, it brooded inscrutable and intangible, facing him with its dumb, tremendous calm. It had no kinship with the universe. There was no act. No moment in its vast life's cushion met by its silence died on her lips. The world's effort ceased, convicted of ignorance, finding no sanction of supernal life. There was no mind there with its need to know. There was no heart there with its need to love. All person perished in its namelessness. There was no second. It had no partner or peer. Only itself was real to itself. A pure existence safe from thought and mood, a consciousness of unshared immortal bliss, he dwelt aloof in its bare infinite, one and unique, unutterably soul, a being formless, featureless and mute, that knew itself by its own timeless self, aware forever in its motionless depths, uncreating, uncreated and unborn. The one by whom all live, who lives by none, an immeasurable luminous secrecy guarded by the veils of the unmanifest. Above the changing cosmic interlude, about supreme, immutably the same, a silent cast, occult, impenetrable, infinite, eternal, unthinkable, alone.